Welcome to the video lecture series, Culture, Worldview, and Origins. We're Tim and Holly Nyquist. We're in number five of a uh, segment of, of building our own philosophy, building our own, our own thought system, and it's a process that, uh, that I had to struggle through and, uh, and put together and just thought that I would, I would share it because um, I, just, I just see that there's a lot of ideas coming into uh, the marketplace, into churches and seminaries that really are ideas that are, are not compatible with my, with my framework. And I'm trying to make my framework um, compatible with what I s call a, a, a biblical framework. And what I see a lot in the world is coming in is that they are they might be Christians, they might have the title, they might have even the, 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 the place or the position, but what is being taught uh, does not match my, my mental framework of what is biblical. Um, because as, as we've learned going through is that to have a framework it must be consistent, it must be something that we have built personally that reflects all of us, all of our values, starting from our cultural perspective, the Velt build, we, we started building and understanding how culture influences the way it is thought. And so if I am going to build a, a, a framework built on biblical framework of biblical parameters, then I have to correctly understand the context of where, what, where those parameters come from, which is a non-Western Hebrew context. So I have to recognize culture and how that influences my thinking and that I, I can't come to the, the study of Scripture with a Western mindset and think that I am getting the, the principles uh, correctly understood as if it was understood by the original recipients and, and, and writers and authors. So culture plays a very important part. Culture then produces a tendency towards my source. What source do I choose to be my source of reliable knowledge? As a Christian and as trying to be biblical, my source is an external authority. My source would be God as revealed through special and general revelation. But as I've commented before is that that source for many others now has been swapped out. They've changed it. Even though they, they might be pastors, they might be teachers, they, they might be in seminaries or wherever, they have swapped out the, the bottom source of, of being external authority to intuition or, or to reason. And it's kind of like, no, wait a minute, we, we shouldn't do that if we're going to maintain a structural consistency of the house that we're building. So here we are, we have the epistemology, which is the source of our reliable knowledge. After the source or out of the source, then comes our basic beliefs, which would be the metaphysics. And that's what we've been looking at is the metaphysics. And that is part of our prejudices, okay? That is what Stephen Jay Gould had mentioned. He went from culture to prejudices, and prejudice means to prejudge. We have to have a mental framework already in place to be able to judge. And it's our prejudices reflected of what, how we choose the framework. What do we choose as our source of reliable knowledge is a prejudice. What are our basic beliefs and they come out of our source of reliable knowledge? Those are prejudices also. Now we're wrapping up on prejudices. We're wrapping up on the metaphysics. Metaphysics, we've learned, has three branches. First one, theology. And we're building off of my metaphysics. These may not be yours, but you can answer the way that you personally are convicted to answer. My answer for theology is, does God exist? My answer is yes. And he is a theistic. I'm a, a, a theism, which would mean I believe in a God that is external to the system, transcendent to the system, but is within the system, can occupy space within the system, and communicate to us within that system. So does God exist? My question, my answer would be yes to that question. Number two, ontology. What is real? Okay, what to you is real? I have chosen that to follow a, a real 
Hebrew framework of thinking that they were real concrete thinkers and they were visually orientated and they believed in a real world. They believed in real objects. They believed in a real God that created a real heavens and a real earth. So I have assumed the realist position, but qualifying it as a critical realist because of that I believe there is a real world out there and real objects, but my access to them are through my personal perceptions. And those perceptions are influenced by theory, habit, prejudice, and culture, as uh, noted by Stephen Jay Gould. So that is my ontology. Now we're going down to the universal science. We're not talking about particular science, we're talking about a universal science. What are the first causes? What is the first cause? And that comes out of your metaphysics. Okay, well, what, what are our options? What are we talking about here? Well, metaphysics, my universal science, what is it? My universal science and yours should be based on your source of reliable knowledge. What is my source of reliable knowledge? It is authority, it is God, as revealed in special and general revelation, the scriptures. And what do the scriptures say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay, so what is my universal science? My universal science is that everything that exists was created. Its first cause was God. Well, who created God? We have to begin with something eternal. We have to begin with something external to the process. So what are the choices? Well, the choices are you can choose that there is a God that is external, and or if you say no to God, then you go to maybe an eternal mind that is within the natural system that through its powers has created, or you can go to eternal ma matter. And obviously now we're reflecting our ontology, okay? If you believe in eternal matter, then what would you be? A realist. If you're thinking of the eternal mind, then what would you be? Well, then you're an idealist. Um, so your, your choices that you have made between theology and ontology will reflect in your universal science. So what is my choice? My choice is that God exists, God is knowable, ontology-wise, a critical realist. So what is my science? It is, it is God created. So it'd be split between a creator science and a creationist in that I don't go from creation to God, I go from God and what he created. And so my first cause is, is God. I don't have to propose a, a first cause of, of some mystical mind and power that's in, in the universe that floated that through this power it created, nor do I have to propose matter and energy as being eternal and somehow uh, came into a, a disequilibrium and it exploded into a big bang and uh, we are the, the product. Those models are products of our metaphysics and what we're thinking. So it's very important to, one, understand and choose your reliable source of knowledge. What is that? Out of your source, you will answer your prejudices of metaphysics, your theology, your ontology, and your un universal science. It's not that hard. You just follow the steps and, and progression and, and answer the questions and you have your philosophy. You're building it, you're in process. So now we're culminating with our prejudices, my prejudice, in this case, my metaphysics. What is it? Theology? Does God exist? Yes. And he's knowable. And he has communicated with us. And I have purpose in life because he created me to fulfill a, a mission that he has for me. Ontology. What is real? Uh, critical realist. Because even though I know that there's God, I know that there's revelation, I know that there's a real world, I must apply hermeneutics in interpreting that. 
And when it comes to me, I perceive it in a way that is influenced by theory, habit, prayers, and culture. So I am a critical realist. Uh, my universal science is based on my source of reliable knowledge. It's, it's, it's based on God. It's based on his revelation to us. So everything has an answer, but the answer should not come from an outside of my paradigm. The answer needs to come from below, which is in the foundation of my house. And the problem that we have today is that a lot of people have ideas coming to them from outside sources, and they're accepting those ideas as theology, as ontology, and as, metaf uh, as metaphysics, uh, metaphysics in general, but universal science. But they, they don't belong. They don't match what we are building up in sequence. And so it, it, it creates an uncertainty. It creates a, a, a confusion as to what can I do? What can I not do? And uh, so we just need to follow the progression of building our own metaphysics, building our own house, building our own house of, of, of thought. Um, which reflects then our personal belief system, which then reflects also the, the culture that, that we come from. Going back to the quote from Stephen Jay Gould, first facts do not come to us as objective items seen in the same unambiguous way by all reasonable people. Theory, habit, prejudice, and culture all influence the facts we choose to observe and the way in which we perceive them. Now I think you, you may understand a little bit more about that quote and about the, the four factors that Stephen Jay Gould mentions and how they influence the perception process, the thinking. Back to the house, we've now covered Weltbild, which is the culture. We've, we've covered epistemology, which is the source of our knowledge. And, and that is a very important choice to make because out of that source, we build our metaphysics, which is a response to theology, a response to ontology, and a response to universal science, building our basic beliefs. And those are our prejudices. So now we've completed, one, the, the culture stage of the house. We've completed the prejudice stage of the house. And now we're going to be moving up to the next stage, which would be the methods employed. That's number five, lecture series number five. Um, thank you for staying with us. I hope that you're still here and that you're still following it and that you're able to grasp the concepts and put them together to realize that each one of us need to personalize and build our own philosophy and that we have to be aware of it because there's a lot of, a lot of options out there of, of following what, what's our source of reliable knowledge. Our metaphysics, what's your theology? What, what's your ontology? What, what's your universal science? Those are all personal choices that affect one's philosophy. But yet, when we receive something in class, we receive something from internet, we read a book, we have no idea where that author is coming from. We have no idea of how he has built his philosophy and how he is presenting to us the facts that are tainted by his theory, his habit, his prejudices, and his culture. Um, we know none of that, usually. And um, so it's important. It's important to understand and to build our own, build my own, so that I can discern between authors, I can discern between scientific models of origins, and I can say why I accept this and I reject that. And that's what we need to do. We need to choose. We need to be obedient. And if we have a title of saying that we are Christians, we are biblical, we have a biblical worldview, we follow a biblical philosophy, then it, it needs to be biblical. It needs to be not only biblical, but it needs to be from a non-Western cultural perspective that correctly interprets and applies the principles. Thanks again for joining me. We're Tim and Holly Nyquist, and uh, this is number, number five out of ten. We're halfway through. Thanks for joining me.